What's going on guys? No, no, just checking in. I just had a great meeting with my, my doctor recently and she said something to me that I thought was very profound. It was really thought provoking and I thought could benefit you guys as it certainly benefited me. Um, she asked me a very simple question, a very straightforward question. And what she asked me was, do I really truly want to get better? Do I really want to get better? And of course she's referring to a number of things, my, my depression, my anxiety, my, my alcoholism. Do I really want to get better? And it sort of sounds like a ridiculous question when I first heard it. I was like, of course I want to get better. What, what are you trying to say? And she just said, I just wanted to hear you, you say it. I wanted to hear you verbalize it. Why do you want to get better? Because you say you do, but tell me, why do you want to get better? And she made me outline the reasons I wanted to get better. And then she made me identify the things that I've been doing over the last couple of years that have both been positive as well as negative and detrimental towards that recovery, towards getting better. And she brought up something that I, I think for a prideful person would be difficult to hear, but for someone who's willing to be open-minded, uh, you know, it, it could be very helpful and beneficial. And she brought up the possibility that I was, um, I was unable to detach from the, the recovery process and allow myself to be okay, sabotaging myself in order to, to be able to continue to try to get better. And I, at first I was like, no, impossible. That doesn't, it sounds crazy. I mean, why would anyone try to not get better in order to get better? And then I started reflecting and, and, uh, and speculating and, and hypothesizing why I might be so uh, inclined to self-sabotage with my mental health recovery, with the, with the drinking, which of course coincides with mental health recovery. Maybe I like the attention I get when I'm not doing well. Maybe um, I have some people in my life that are a little bit codependent on, on me getting better and that's like a role they take in my life. Maybe I don't know how to let them take another role. Maybe I don't know how to be a different, different person, a person that doesn't need help. And maybe that transition is eerie and uncomfortable and I fight it even though it's the best possible thing for me. And so I just thought it was really interesting to, to think, you know, look at it objectively and, and wonder what the cause is and the root is for, for some of my choices. And, and I just thought it was, I was, it was cool for lack of better words. I thought it was a cool thing to think about and, and I was proud of myself for being able to be honest about it because I know that I've got some patterns that I've, I are very obvious, you know, they're very evident, but I, I don't do anything actively to change them. And I don't, I think I, I, I think I've been so accustomed to not doing well over the last few years that I, it's sort of the place in this world and, and it's my position that I, I don't know, I, I identify most with as much as it's caused me pain. It's like that's become my identity and it's really, really important to detach yourself from your identity if it's a negative one and allow yourself to become more. And so we were discussing this, my doctor and I, and we were really looking at it and, and trying to, to take it in and be okay with it. Not be embarrassed, not be ashamed, but just be real with it. Be willing to admit that it was a thing. And so I think to some capacity it is. It's a thing that I need to accept about myself is I have, have played a, a, the role of someone who has been sick down and out and, and become, for whatever reason, attached to that place. And there, there is a time when it was completely valid. It made sense. And now I've come into a point in my life, my recovery, that the setbacks I'm experiencing are, are completely within my control, or I would say 80 to 90% within my control. And I need to be okay with uh, the growth that has happened and I need to be okay with being okay. It certainly would make me uh, more available to be of service to others and, and it would make me a better, stronger version of myself. And I will undoubtedly come upon hard times again in my life, as will you. And perhaps you are in hard times right now, but I just want to encourage you to, to ask yourself that question, do I really want to get better? 
and if, and, and if it sounds simple, then write down the reasons you want to get better, what you've done to get better, and then what you've done to make not getting better possible. And if you're repeating certain things like I have repeated, there's a pattern there and there's a reason and it's, and it's worth looking deeper into and thinking about, figuring out what you got to do to break that cycle. And having the faith, and this is something I've been trying to say to myself, having the faith to that, that things will evolve as they should in a better way. Things will get better. There's life beyond recovering from depression. There's life beyond recovering from low testosterone. There's life beyond recovering from, from alcoholism. There's more. And, it's, and even though it's almost strange and uncomfortable to feel okay... It's okay. That's the fucking point. It's all right. Even if the the, the inner peace is uncomfortable because it's so foreign to you, I pray myself the willingness to, to, to be open to getting used to things being all right. And that I don't always have to need help. And I don't always have to be in distress. And, and if I can get used to that, then a, a stronger, more empowered, more assertive, more confident, more helpful, useful, and, 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 and just happy version of myself will emerge and um, and I need to let that change happen I need to let myself grow up and move on from what happened to me I, it's so it's just so hard sometimes to let go of something so traumatic as what happened to me and, and, and what happens to many of you and what has happened that you almost don't know how to let go of that suffering because it took you over it took you so low it took you so far that you you almost can't imagine it doesn't it's not around anymore because you never thought it would go away and i want to be one of those people that can accept and move on from something very traumatic that happened to me and will i reflect on it always i'm sure at least to some capacity and well there'll be hard days of course there will be hard days but is there life beyond it yes and i need to allow that to happen it needs to be okay it needs to be okay, and that's just, I just wanted to make this video see if it, if it provoked any thought in you. If it did, that's awesome. If it didn't, then you probably just heard one of my more impressive psychobabble rants, uh, which is, a, you know, it's its own thing to be uh, entertained by. <laughs> anyway. I like it. I like this stuff. I like growing. I like trying to grow. I like self-realization, you know, you have to take inspiration when it comes and you have to have the fortitude and the and the, the, the strength to push through when you no longer feel inspired. And I just feel inspired to continue to grow and change today. Um, and I, I like that feeling. It certainly is better than feeling like I'm just, you know, in a groundhog's day state of mind where I don't know how to break free of myself. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Leave me questions, comments. I love you guys. I, I've been saying more I love you lately. It's because I really do have so much love for you guys on this platform, the people that reach out. And um, I like the idea that we are tackling life as it comes together and, and we're sharing and we're being open and, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, as messy as it can get, it's a beautiful thing. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.